Our main focus this week is going to be over a standard that deals with systems. But more importantly, we want to take a look at what happens when we get to a I step test question that we truly don't know how to start. And is that going to be us just turning the page and ignoring the problem? Or are we going to see if there's anything that we can do at all? So in terms of review before we look at this problem, I want to talk a little bit about systems of equations and how we solve them. Now, if you're um, in a class where you haven't talked about systems yet, there's still going to be some important information in here that you can use. So remember, when we have a system, for example, something that says y equals 4x plus 8 and y equals 2x plus, I don't know, 20. Okay, even if you've never looked at solving a system before, there's still some information that we can gather from looking at this problem, right? We should be able to look at this and say, okay, well, I know that y is equal to 4x plus 8, and I also know that y is equal to 2x plus 20. Okay, so if y equals 4x plus 8 and y equals 2x plus 20, then it should also be the case that 4x plus 8 is equal to 2x plus 20. And that would be a true statement. Now, if you've already looked at systems and dealt with solving systems, we can also go the more just sort of mathematical approach, algebra approach, which says, okay, I know that y equals 4x plus 8, which means this y can go away, and I can replace that with 4x plus 8. Either way, we end up with a statement that says 4x plus 8 equals 2x plus 20. Right? Whether or not we knew anything about systems, there was still some information there that we could gather because these both equal y. Now, let's maybe say that this over here represents, um, this 4x plus 8 is going to represent one flower shop where we can buy flowers. We can spend $4 per flower and then $8 on the vase. And another flower shop says that we can spend $2 per flower and $20 per vase. Right, so this is gonna be our sort of per flower price. Right, and this is gonna be our vase price. Right, we spend more for the vase here, but less per flower, and we spend more per flower here, but less per vase. Right, we can use this and solve this equation to give us some information about when it's gonna be more beneficial to go with one flower store over the other. So hopefully remember, right, we can get variables together. We'll undo a positive 2x by using a negative 2x since they're on opposite sides. We'll undo adding 8 by subtracting 8. And then we'll undo multiplication with division. Right, so since our x was here and this was our per flower price, right, this x is going to represent the number of flowers that we purchase. Now, all too often when we're answering a math problem, we sort of get to this x equals, we circle a problem, or circle an answer, and we think we're done. Okay, the problem is that we need to be doing some explaining with it. What does this actually mean? Okay, so while yes, we are talking about us purchasing six flowers, what this really tells us is that when we buy six flowers, these two things are equal to each other, right? We had an equal sign in here. So if I buy six flowers at flower store A, maybe we'll call this flower store A, and I buy six flowers at flower store B, then it will be the same price. Okay, which means I can then use that to calculate some more information. If I were to buy seven flowers, Okay, the vase is no longer important, and on the seventh flower, do I want to spend $2 or do I want to spend $4? Well, personally, I want to spend less money. Okay, so on the seventh flower, if I'm going to buy seven flowers or more, it's going to be worth it to go with option B, to go to store B. Okay, if I'm going to buy five flowers or less, then it's going to be cheaper to go to flower store A. If I buy six flowers, it's not gonna matter what store I go to.